All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP Pavilion laptop model 15-EG2073CL. Right, so we're going to be needing a JIS-0 and most likely JIS-1 screwdriver. So first thing, we're going to undo the two screws down here with a JIS-0 screwdriver. Okay, you want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Right, so we got these two. And then there's going to be some screws hidden underneath these rubber feet. So let's go ahead and remove those. Okay, so I just used my fingernail. You can use a um, little pry tool or um, a flathead screwdriver. But we're going to get in there and peel this out. Okay, we'll set that aside. Then we got the one down here. We're going to peel that out as well. Okay, and you want to try and not stretch this too much. So just try and pull this out. Okay. And it looks like the screws are only at the corner, so technically you could just lift the adhesive at the corners and then undo the screw and leave the rest attached. All right, so sometimes they hide screws under over here, so I usually take it out all the way just to be safe. Um, but in this case, it looks like there's only screws at the corners. All right, we switch to the JS1 screwdriver and we're gonna remove the screws here. Okay, so this one, this one. All right, and we got the other two here. All right, now that we got all six screws out, we're gonna pop the bottom cover off. So usually the best way to do that, let's see if it's the same for this model, but you'll get between the bottom cover and the palm rest here. All right, and then you'll push with your thumb on the palm rest, make sure not to push on the touchpad itself. So we'll pull, I got my fingernails here, and then we'll push with our thumb here, and let's see if we can pop the clips out. So we'll go with two hands. Okay, and, hmm. Looks like the clips on this are holding super strong. Let's try from this side. Okay, this these clips are holding really strong on this. So let's see, I see a gap here. Let's see if we can start from the back, maybe. Oh, okay. In this case, it looks like we start from the back. So just go like that, pull it. We're basically flexing the cover this way so it kind of pulls itself inwards. And then we're gonna kind of wiggle this and hopefully we can kind of get the bottom cover off. The bottom cover off, I don't know why this section here is super stuck. So let's see, how can we do this? I'm going to grab here and grab that, and let's try sometimes wiggling it back and forth. Nope, doesn't seem to work. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're just pulling it back and forth as we kind of pull up, and let's see, it doesn't seem to want to come out. So let's see, what is holding it? So it looks like the clip inside is going over this way onto the cover, so it's hooking like this. So moving it this way should help, but uh, oh, there we go. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, I have a feeling you guys are gonna have a really tough time getting that off because that wasn't easy at all. All right, um, I think the customer said they dropped this thing or I don't know what happened, but for some reason it doesn't boot up right anymore. So what we're gonna do um, they were able to see the screen for a little bit, but then it's just axe frozen. Let's go ahead and try removing the SSD. This is an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. All right, let me actually get a good thumbnail view here. Okay, so we got this. All right, so I'm going to pull the SSD up. It comes up like that. Once you remove the screw, then you can go ahead and wiggle this and pull this back. Right, I'm gonna see if it powers up and if it goes to the BIOS right away. If it does, then it's basically a bad SSD and we should be able to fix it by replacing the SSD. All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. And as you can see, it went straight to the boot device is not found. So I'm very sure that <coughs> the SSD is the issue um, because everything else seems to be good. I'm going to power this off and then I'm going to power it on again just to make sure. Okay. And it's powering on. If it goes straight to that little, yep. 
So I'm going to let the customer know we're most likely going to put a new SSD, reinstall Windows from scratch, and then the computer should be good. All right, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at the other components inside. This is very similar to a lot of other HP laptops that I've worked on. You got the DC jack charge port connector here. Um, if you want to remove that, there's the wings. You just wiggle and pull that connector back. All right, the charge port is trapped underneath the hinge. So to remove that, you would basically, I would usually open the screen slightly, undo these screws, then close it back down. After that, there's going to be a gap here, and then you can pull the hinge all the way back. All right. You got this USB board here. Okay, connects to the motherboard with this flat ribbon cable. This is a ZIF or zero insertion force cable. Um, this is for a little lock, which I don't really see anyone use these days. All right, you got this uh, wireless card here. To remove that, you will have to peel this uh, plastic uh, adhesive rectangle thing out. Um, to remove the antenna, as you pull from the tail, pull straight up and it will pop out. I have videos showing this. I'm not gonna mess around with, with removing stuff that I don't need to because sometimes the solder and things can be not done very well and then it can break off and then the customer will wonder why other things are broken when the only thing that was wrong with it was like the SSD in this case. Right, fan, the connector's there, same thing, you grab like the wings of it and you wiggle and pull it back. There's a little connector here with nothing connected to it. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's for since there's no labels or anything but sometimes these are for like fingerprint sensors or some other kind of NFC sensor or something. Here you can see the battery model number is HW03XL. Um, to remove that, you undo all the screws holding it. Um, so there's one, two, three, four, five. Um, there's only five screws it looks like. All right, and then after you remove those screws, you can go from here and I just pull up and the battery will pop up like this and then you can take it out and you can put a new one that way. All right, you got the touchpad trackpad connector here. Same thing, there's a flip latch, keyboard backlight connector, flip latch there, and then the keyboard connector here, flip latch there. There's only one fan, um, and the heat sink goes all the way over here for the CPU. Um, there's a separate place where some models have two fans, um, and that's if it has like a dedicated GPU. In this case, it doesn't. I believe the dedicated GPU would be kind of like right here usually. All right, you got the LCD LVDS connector here. If you're gonna flip this up or mess with it make sure um, that you disconnect or remove the battery first make sure it's unplugged and then open the laptop press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power All right you got two slots for ram um, they're using both of them and you pull these two tabs aside it pops up like that you can pull this out and the ram is pc4 32 something Let's see, let's get the other one out because maybe that label's not covered by a sticker. Okay, so we'll get that. We'll pull this back out and let's see. Yep, so this is a PC4 3200AA. All right, very common PC4 RAM, um, eight gig stick. So you can upgrade to any um, PC4 3200AA RAM. You should be fine if you want. If you can find two 16 gig sticks, you can have 32 gigs of RAM. If you can find two 32 gig sticks, you can get 64 gigs most likely. Usually I rarely will see like an actual capacity limitation and as long as you can get this uh, uh, stick of RAM then you should be okay. Just make sure it's PC4 3200 AA. It might support other speeds but uh, from my experience sometimes using different speeds will cause it to not really work. All right there's a speaker connector here. Same thing you grab that and you kind of wiggle and pull that out. Um, that speaker has a wire going along to the other speaker over here. Uh, other than that, I don't really see much else to go over in this thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to let the customer know, see what they want to do, and then um, if they want to put the SSD, then I will continue continue with doing that. Um, if you're doing this, if you're upgrading the SSD to a different one or a larger one, um, and you want to keep the software and everything in, uh, intact, I do have a video showing how you can clone it using a free software. Um, if you just want to start completely fresh, make sure you create a Windows USB installer. Um, Microsoft actually provides a EXE program to create a bootable USB. Make sure that you run that program, not that you just drag it onto a USB stick. All right, so that's it for now, um, but you'll probably see me again in a few, um, I mean like almost immediately, putting either a new SSD or putting back the old SSD and reassembling it. Um, anyways, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in a bit. 
All right, so the customer ended up deciding on a 500 gig M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. They just wanted it to boot up and work. They didn't really care as much about performance or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get this. We have a Crucial P3. Basically it goes in at an angle here. Actually, let me zoom in here a little bit for you guys. Okay, so it just goes in at an angle like that. Get the screw. All right, lower this down. And then we'll just screw this down into place. All right, to test it, we're gonna start it up before we put on the bottom cover. All right, I believe this had Windows 10. Um, we're gonna install Windows 10 on there. Okay, so I have a Windows 10 USB installer that we created with Microsoft's utility. So we're just gonna get that USB in there. We're gonna slowly, carefully open this up and we're gonna power on the computer. To get to the boot devices, you press F9 on boot. Uh, usually what I do is I'll press the power button and then I'll just keep tapping F9 repeatedly. Okay, so let's see here. Does it have charge? Do I need to plug it in? It might not be. Oh, I think the battery's dead. Let me go get the charger real quick and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in. Okay, so we'll plug that in. All right, and then again, we'll press uh, power it on and we'll keep pressing F9. I can actually see the power light is on, so maybe it turned itself on. And let's go ahead and just keep pressing F9. Um, I didn't see the screen come up, so it's kind of weird. I hope it's not that their screen, um, not the screen, uh, but the slot is having some issue because right now it's not coming on at all. Is it doing anything? No. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and hold the power button to power it off completely. Make sure the power light goes off. Okay, let's power it on again. Okay, and we'll press F9. Let's see, is anything happening here? The fan is spinning. Is nothing happening? The fan stopped spinning. Hmm. Maybe there's some other. Maybe there really is some other weird issue with this thing. So I'm gonna force power it off again. We're gonna pull the SSD out. It could also be the RAM is doing something weird. Let's see here. So I'm gonna try and brush this because I do see some like dusty stuff here. Let's go ahead and pop the RAM out and pop it back in because sometimes. Sometimes the sticks of RAM having issues can cause it to not start up properly. Okay. Put that back in. All right, let's power this on again. And we're gonna keep pressing F9. The old SSD here, let me see what it was, if I can, there you go. We got the boot, we're gonna press enter on boot from my USB. Okay. This is a PCIe, the old one is a PCIe Gen 4x4. Um, but here you can see it's already booting up, so we should be good to go. We're just gonna have to install Windows and then run all the updates, make sure all the drivers are there. If they're not, go to HP's website, find all the drivers. But that should be pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on and we should be good to go. All right, so let's zoom out a tiny bit here. A little bit more, okay. So let's get the bottom cover back on and then we'll finish installing Windows and that should be it. Okay, so to get the bottom cover back on, we're gonna start with the bottom first like this. Okay, make sure it's all flush down here. You might have to help push it down. Okay, and then work your way up the sides just like this. And snap all of that in and we should be good. Now we just gotta get all the screws back in We'll finish the Windows install and that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't contribute that way, again, it helps a lot. If you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those too. Uh, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. 
But other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. We're gonna get all these screws back in, put the little rubber feet back on, and then get the OS on. All right. Also, the rubber feet, there are two different, uh, they are different, so keep in mind, pay attention. You can actually see where the imprints from the markings underneath were. I like to get one edge in first, then go to the other side, get that edge in, and then basically work my way towards the center, and that will help with any stretching of the rubber to kind of even it out so it's not all pushing in one direction, right? The adhesive they kind of put here is not really good for um, being pulled out and put back sometimes, so it might kind of slide. If it does, you could always um, try and fix that by putting some new adhesive. All right, I'm gonna now get this side in here, get this side over here, get that all in. All right, there we go. Rubber feet are completely reinstalled. Let's go ahead and flip this back over. This big dent kind of scares me, but there we go. Powered up, and then we're just gonna finish the Windows install. All right, and that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Thanks for watching. Oh, why is the screen staying off? Huh. I think that's weird. Let's see here. Let's get this back on. All right. Keep pressing F9. It might be there's some other weird issue. If that's the case, I don't know what's going on. That's kind of strange. It's taking a while to start up this time. So, yeah. Anyways, that's it for now. I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.